Folks, hello! It is time for some Friday hobby nightmares. I hope you're having a wonderful week. If you enjoy my videos and you think you'll like this one, then press the like button. It really does help out my videos in the old YouTube gods and getting their attention and getting them to share our content. So if you can like the video, that would be absolutely amazing for me. It takes one click, doesn't affect your life beyond that, but it does affect mine. It makes the algorithm go, hmm, there he is, share his videos. So there we are. Moving on, shall we? Uh, Knees says, Hiya North, please call me Knees. I enjoy listening to your Hobby Nightmares videos during my hobby time. It has become a bit of a ritual for me to sit and listen to one uh, the night before my weekly club while I'm packing my army. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad I'm part of your weekly ritual. I'm glad you have a ritual because it means that you've got a good hobby group to go to. Do you know what I mean? My nightmare isn't much of a nightmare, more of just a hobby man-child that I came across recently. Well, that's a nightmare. My local games workshop holds a painting competition each month for the mini of the month, and there is a set theme each time. In May, the mini of the month was a Deathwing Terminator. The manager held a joust before the judging, which involved entrants controlling their Terminator in a modified Kill Team style game. The first game was a free-for-all, and it was a bunch of hobby guys all standing around the table awkwardly, but overall it was very fun. Everyone's models were gorgeously painted, and after a short while, people had started warming up to each other. One of the models had been converted to the Black Knight from Monty Python, with his arms on the floor. Overall, it was a great little conversion. The model's owner failed an armor saved and exclaimed, "'Tis but a flesh wound!" which got a few laughs. And in fairness, it was pretty funny. However, on noticing that people had laughed at his joke, the man-child who I will call Jensen, hey, it's catching on, decided he would say it again, and again, and again. No one laughed the second time, and from the third time onwards, people started giving each other sideways glances and sighing. <laughs> oh no, that's so awkward. That's so awkward. Because you can tell this poor guy, you know, he, he was probably shocked that people laughed at his joke. He said, oh my god, people laughed at that. I'll carry on doing it. Because, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, without realising that's a guy who's not very socially adept. Um, this did not phase old Jensen. And he could not read the room at all. And was generally just being loud and obnoxious. Anyway, on to game two. Which was a team game. Two teams. And whichever team is alive at the end, wins. Someone on Jensen's opponent team decided he was gunning for Jensen. After some dice rolls, Jensen's Terminator had become Jensen's Terminated, to which he exclaimed, He's using weighted dice to the manager. The manager just sighed and said, Dude, he's rolling the same as everybody else through gritted teeth. I think something clicked in Jensen's brain because he stopped being so obnoxious from then on. After the end of game two, it was time to judge the painting competition entries. How it works is all of the entrants give 5 points ratings to everybody else's models based on a few different things, such as theme, colours, etc. For some context, the guy who was gunning for Jensen had a beautifully painted model and received a lot of compliments for it. I overheard Jensen mention to somebody, I'm going to give him a very low score. <laughs> he giggled. I was floored. I didn't know whether to laugh or cringe or stay silent. I can't believe I just did the hee 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 on this, isn't it? Oh, what's wrong with me? Sorry this has been so long-winded for, for such a minor payoff. I struggle to make things concise. I am just still in shock at how this man, who must have been in his late 20s at least, could act so childish about something so minor as a jousting match in the store, enough to complain about weighted dice and to deli deliberately give a bad score to very obviously ex an extremely well-painted model. Anyways, thanks, Northy North. I love what you do. Keep it up. Cheers, knees. Well, I, I do agree. It is very, very petty of Jensen, quote-unquote Jensen, to do that, right? But also, he was being targeted in the game by this guy, and you, and you said that yourself, right? This guy was going out of his way to target him. So I can kind of get his motivation for doing this, even though it's really petty. Um, but from the way you described it, the other guy seemed just as petty. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. 
Um, anyway, uh, Dave says, Greetings North, my name is Dave, an avid 40k slash fantasy collector since 1999 and a recent finder of your channel. Good lad. I recently, this past May, found myself in a difficult situation at my local hobby shop in the Great Lakes region of the United States. It was a Friday night, the busiest night of the month, as it was the much advertised 40k night, when all tables were reserved for 40k players. If you came to the store looking for a Kill Team, Malifaux or an Age of Sigmar game without familiarising yourself with the shop website slash discord channel, you were shit out of luck. Having been to the shop, I was familiar with this policy, but there had been a few times that I'd seen an excited gamer travel to the shop only to be told, Sorry bud, tonight's not your night. Not only store staff, but 40k players made efforts to enforce this policy. Okay. Well, that's the policy, that's the policy. The last 40k Friday in May, I, w I observed a young man walk into the shop, maybe 18 or 19 years old. The cigar box sized case he was carrying immediately made me worry for him. He was thin, pale, glasses, funny haircut, and had a sheepish quality as he was only able to look downwards as he navigated the floor. I see young men walk into the store like this, we're all nerds, but this poor guy really stood out. I waited for him to wander to my table to catch his attention. I said, Hey bud, how's it going? Um, I'm Dave. We shook hands, and he gave me his name, Michael. Name change for privacy. Immediately upon speaking with Michael, I concluded that this might be the first time he's been to, to out of his house in quite a long time. I invited him to watch my current 40k game that was only just starting, but did not mention to him that it was a 40k exclusive night. I'm assuming that slipped your mind, you know what I mean? Enter my opponent, Jensen. It really is catching on. I love it. It really is catching on. Enter my opponent, Jensen. I've only been familiar with Jensen, having never played him, but have uh, I've seen him around the store and the scene and, and in the shop's Discord channel. And Jensen was an admech player who was already wiping the floor with me at the bottom of turn two, having brought his most meta list, I assume. The way it was going, it was kind of obvious. I've never been competitive and usually show up expecting to lose. I enjoy the scene, putting my completely painted orc force on the table and rolling the dice to, to kill what I can, and I never question an opponent about their rules. Jensen was clearly growing annoyed with Michael, because Michael was intently watching our game from my side of the table. I did my best to lend my attention to Michael, as he was asking many innocent questions about our game, casually mentioning that he's only ever played Kill Team. Jensen, growing impatient, called out to Michael, and I quote, Hey man, we're trying to get a game in here, and tonight's not Kill Team night. Would you mind going to watch somebody else? Jensen gestured with his hand in a go-piss-off fashion. It's worth noting that Jensen, since 2020, has been active in the shop's Discord channel, properly, quote-unquote, espousing the views of Games Workshop that Warhammer is for everybody and if you don't agree you will not be missed etc. Yeah it doesn't surprise me that somebody who who parrots that kind of bollocks is exactly the kind of hypocrite who will turn around to somebody else and say what he just did to this Michael dude. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't surprise me. You know? At this gesture my eyes narrowed and my lips frowned at Jensen. I raised my own hand, showing him my palm at chest level, and said, Hey, let him watch. You've already won. Can you just let him watch? Jensen argued, I don't know why he's here anyway. I don't know what he expects to play on 40k night. Then he chuckled. His tone was slick with pomposity and arrogance. A quick note about me. I've been a policeman for 18 years. In that time, I've become comfortable and I've learned to thrive in realms of, content, of confrontation. I familiarise myself with a large subset of human behaviour as I've had to do with training and stuff, and Jensen had just become what I'd call a social liability. What I was about to do to Jensen may have made me his hobby nightmare, I guess. I paused for a brief moment after having absorbed Jensen's remark. I thought to myself, could Jensen not see Michael? Could Jensen not hear Michael's timid voice? Could Jensen not see that Michael was new and unaware of the monthly 40k Friday? 
I did not err on the side of caution. I said, I said loudly, <laughs> oh my god, you snide motherfucker. My tone shifted from, hey, hey, everybody let's be nice, to get on the ground and show me your hands. He's not hurting anyone, I said rather loudly. It was deep and solid enough that I got the attention of the table next to us, and perhaps others that I did not see. Jensen quickly relented, showing me both of his hands in a I'm cool, I'm cool fashion, stating, hey man, it's cool, whatever. My demeanor mellowed immediately, having Cal Jensen to piping down. Michael didn't move. I may have also scared him, but we continued. Jensen continued to shoot my orcs off the board, and Michael kept watching and asking the occasional question. After our game, Jensen left the store. Michael coached me through my first game of Kill Team. Nobody came over to question us because it was late and there were open tables all around the place. Michael eventually told me that he'd only ever been in the shop to buy a product and had never actually come into the shop seeking a game. Only one shop regular approached me, Carl, after Jensen left, stating, I saw what you did there. Jensen can be a real dick, don't worry about it. I texted Michael a link to the shop's Discord channel but nobody ever explained to Michael that the third Friday of every month is 40k night. I still feel... Well, maybe you should have. You know, you had enough time. <laughs> maybe you should have. I still feel bad for Michael and hope that he will come into the shop again seeking more Kill Team games. Thank you for your time, time North, Dave. Yeah, I, again, I, I am absolutely unsurprised that somebody who quotes rhetoric like that, that we saw from Games Workshop, like it's a good thing, you know, is intolerant of other people. Call me shocked. Do you know what I mean? It's normally the ones who espouse for equality the loudest who are the most intolerant. I'm telling you now. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> the Turk says... Hi, lad. <laughs> Either you're from Liverpool or, you, or you've had a stroke. One of the two. Um, hi, lad. Just call me the Turk for this story. I love how he, he, he's, made, he's put the Turk in, like, capitals. Like, the in capitals. This brilliant. Not Turk. The Turk. Uh, just call me the Turk for this story. Just a brief one. Probably not a nightmare, but I found it funny. I thought I'd share it with you. So, I had a game of Kill Team with a random guy I'd met at a club through a Facebook group. Let's call him Dave. Ah, we're back to Dave's. We, we, we've ended the Jensen streak. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we had a... a Hobby Nightmare the other day about a guy called Jensen and then some and then somebody else did a another Hobby Nightmare a few days later from another point of view of a similar event about the same guy called Jensen. So we kind of we kind of replaced Dave with Jensen because it's less of a it's less of a known name and a lot of people are called Dave and I don't want people driving the pickup truck and like veering off the road because you know they're hearing their name slandered all the time. Anyway, I had recently finished painting a Beastman kill team. And this guy had a Space Marine Scouts kill team. Painted as Space Wolves. Okay. Um, are Beastmen a kill team? Or are you... I, I don't know. Or are you doing like mutants and stuff as like Chaos Dudes? Anyway. I got there and unpacked my boys. And he did the same. Whilst unpacking uh, his models, he started to tell me the backstory of his team. And he had this long and elaborate story behind each one. I listened in, and his background got more and more elaborate, and honestly, I was quite impressed that he had put so much effort into them. Well, good for you! I know a lot of people, right, who, who, would, who would look at this and be like, you know what, I'm just going to stop listening. One of them is me. You know how much into narratives I am. One of them is me. Like, I'm definitely a guy who, if I've had a long day... And somebody's going, this is my my uh, commander called Terence. And he goes, and da, 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 da. Uh, I'd, I'd be, uh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Anyway, who's rolling for deployment? Is it me? Uh, you know. At the end, he asked me if I had a backstory for my guys. I had recently watched the old Mike Judge movie, Office Space. If you've not seen it, give it a watch. It's a stone cold classic. My backstory was that these beast men worked in a white collar office <laughs> and the team was called Initech Software Division and had been working on getting their computer systems 
up and running for the year 40k bug. I had named them after characters in the movie, Bill Lumberg, Peter Gibbons, Sammy and Michael Bolton, not that one, Milton Wadhams, Bob One and Bob Two, Drew and Karg the Destroyer. That last one wasn't a character in the film, no shit. Okay, now I can tell which one, which one the, the 40k name is. Karg the Destroyer. <laughs> That sounds like the name of some some like rampant lesbian would give a would give a dildo. Cog the destroyer. <laughs> Fetch Cog the destroyer. I'm going to destroy myself. Anyway, I looked up to see if he got the joke, and all I could see was his face getting redder and redder. He seemed genuinely angry that I had made a joke out of the game. Hmm, okay. I asked him, are you alright mate? And he just nodded his head. You might be Australian actually. M maybe, I don't know. I asked him, are you alright mate? And he just nodded his head. I can tell you what's gone wrong here. Right? He's put all this effort into his into his uh, his story of his, of his models, right? And he thinks now, he thinks you're mocking him. That's what I think. I think he thinks you're mocking him, but you're actually, you know, um, by doing such a silly story for your own. Even though it's a real story that you've thought up and, and you, you, you've you done because you think it's cool. Um, we deployed, but he kept completely silent thro throughout, making only perfunctory comments here and there. We got to the third or fourth turn, and I was well on top, and I'd taken a completely unassailable lead at this point. We got to the end... And I held my hand out to shake, having worn out a canter. And he said, This doesn't count as a loss for my team, because you haven't taken it seriously, and you made a joke out of it. I was like, Mate, oh, come on, it's just a fucking game. You don't have to be all sour about it. He walked away, and spoke briefly to the group organiser, before walking out, and my hand was left hanging on Shook. I just got this, this image in my head of him like, He's walked around for 20 minutes before he leaves and your hand's still there. You refuse to take it away, but there's nobody there anymore. That's quite funny. Um, yeah, again, I, I honestly think that he's, he's put his heart and soul into his lore, man. Um, because you, like, you did in your own in your own way. You, you, you put your heart and soul into your lore, but you also kind of didn't. Do you know what I mean? You took the fist a little bit, which is fine. You know, the guy should, this guy should lighten up, I'm with you. The guy should lighten up, you know, you, you shouldn't put your entire, um, you know, emotional life savings in the story you've written for your little plastic men. That's ridiculous. But also, I can, if you've, it depends how you've told your side of the story. If you've told your lore in a very jokey way, like you're just throwing it away there, I can understand why he's gotten a bit reticent with you. But, like, being this much of a dick about it at the end, saying, yeah, my loss doesn't count because you're not taking it seriously, so, you know, that's somebody who's way too invested in the game. That's that that's kind of, uh, not creepy, but it, it, it's alarming. It's alarming. As I was leaving, the group organiser came over laughing and told me that Dave was not happy with me for taking for not taking the game very seriously. I explained the story about my team, and he laughed. He'd seen the movie and completely got the joke. I'd been back to the group a few times, and played the organiser with my 2000 point orc army, and he has told me that he knew, with my terrible sense of humour, that I'd have to be an orc player. <laughs> so this is what happens when an orc player comes across somebody who just doesn't get it. <laughs> he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Like, 40k to an orc player is, is satire. The whole thing. They like, just go in there going, yep, that's a that's a lovely bit of in-depth law you've got going on there. It'd be, it'd be a shame if somebody was to come over and vomit green all over it. Anyway, I've actually started meeting up with the organiser socially and I've become friends away from the group. So, very good and all that. And every cloud has its silver lining. Anyway, cheers my guy. Speak to you soon. Take it easy. The Turk. Yeah, I always remember to put the in front of Turk so everyone knows that I need to do it. Um... Yeah, I, I kind of get where he's coming from, dude. Like, I, I can see it. I can I can see... These are the good hobby nightmares, right? I can kind of see both sides. I can see why you were like, dude, come on. Do you know what I mean? Like, are, are you kidding me? 
absolutely. Like, I, I, come on, just stop being so prissy about your law. Stop getting so up yourself. But also, you don't know what mental issues this guy has. This guy might have some serious, serious blind spots mentally, right? He might even be somebody with us with certain issues, autism maybe. I don't know. Uh, where he, he sees a lot of self-worth and a lot of investment in 40k, in Kill Team, and in doing the story of his background team. So, you may have touched on something, like a nerve, that he didn't really like. And if he's throwing all of his passion into explaining his Kill Team to you, and then you turn yours into like a stand-up comedy bit, I, I can see why, as a fellow person who likes to write lore, if I was explaining one of my, one of my game worlds to somebody, right... And then they came back at me and said, Oh, well, yeah, here's my game world. Everyone just shits on the floor and, you know, it's great. Then I'd be like, yeah, you're a douche. You're, you're a douche. No, I don't want to speak to you anymore, right? That'd be me, if, if it was me. Because um, I'd feel like that person was taking the piss. So it depends how you've said it. If you said it the way I said that there, I can see why you had that reaction. But if you just, if you just said, Oh, yeah, yeah I've, I've got a story for mine, but it's not as like in depth as yours and it's kind of more comedy you know but anyway here's mine and then you you tell him yours that's fine but if you're just being flipping about it then it it will come across as if you're just taking the piss out of him and you're, and you're belittling him for being into his hobby so i can get why he would be annoyed with you um i bet you didn't think i would either but this seemed like a slam dunk right like i'd be on your side but not totally no because if it depends how you've said it it really does if, if you come up at this guy and said yeah well you know Mine is this, 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 and this. And, and you've told him a joke that he doesn't get because he's never seen the movie. I've never seen that movie. So if he's never seen that movie, and you do that joke, and you do it in a really flippant way, I, I might be the same as him. I don't think I'd say this uh, to you at the end. Uh, it doesn't count because you didn't take it seriously. I'd be like, oh, good game, man. Yeah, fair enough. And I'd leave the game you know, on, on a high, on, on a nice note. But I'd never play you again. I'd be like, yeah, what a douche. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I was nice to him about my lore, and I, and I told him about it, and he took the piss out of me. What a douche, right? I wouldn't kick up a stink about it, but I wouldn't play you again, right? Um, so it depends how you've said it. If you've said it in a nice way, mate, yeah, he's gone way overboard here. You know, he needs to lighten up a bit. Especially if you explain that, you know, I know it's stupid and comedy, but I like it, and I wrote it, so, you know. that You put as much effort into your lore as he has into his, then, at that stage, you know? Um, but yeah, depends how you said it. Anyway, I love you all a long time. It was a shorter one today because I've got tons of things on. Um, and we'll speak to you on Sunday for another Let's... Not Let's Play. Live stream. Live stream. We'll be doing our next prize draw. Um, I'll be answering emails on prize draw stuff today. So make sure you're around if you want some tea or a repulsive battle tank. Love you all a long time and I'll speak to you soon. Have a good one. Bye now.